What if Padme Amidala survived after Revenge of the Sith? That's what we're going to go over today. Please leave a like, it helps a lot. And let's get right into it. Padme Amidala gave birth to the second child, and the twins Luke and Leia were in safe hands. With the children safe, Padme could feel herself fading away. Everything she ever knew and loved was gone. She'd sustained serious injuries on Mustafar, Anakin choking and dropping her. The man she loved had completely turned on her, and she was about to let go when a distant voice, the voice of Anakin, called out to her. All she heard was, Padme, and she felt his warm presence, but it was gone in an instant. But that feeling for a moment was all Padme needed. She let go, but she held on to the memory of Anakin, and this memory would keep her barely alive. Later on Polis Masa, Obi-Wan, Yoda, Bail Organa met with each other to discuss their next steps. Padme was alive but in critical condition in the medical bay. It had been a few hours since she gave birth, and the next moves would be critical. Bail was confident that Padme would want to help lead the rebellion that he planned to build, and Obi-Wan hoped she would allow the children to be trained. They decided to allow Padme to decide where they start their operations from should she decide to join them in the resistance against the Empire. Eventually, Padme woke up still in the medical bay. She was delirious, but everything quickly came back to her. The Jedi Temple, the Republic becoming the Empire, Mustafar, Anakin, and her children. Padme tried to get up, but she was still very delirious, and the medical droids asked her to sit. A bit later, Obi-Wan and Bail entered the room, with two children. Padme now held Luke and Leia, looking down into their eyes and seeing a positive future for the galaxy. She was heartbroken, but determined to fight the Empire. For a long while, she didn't have the heart to ask Obi-Wan the big question, but it had to be done. She turned to him, asking where Anakin was. Padme could see the answer in his eyes, and she knew now that Obi-Wan did what had to be done. Anakin was dangerous. He'd nearly killed his own wife and kids, and then tried to kill Obi-Wan, Padme's heart was broken all over again, but she put her hands on Obi-Wan's as she could tell that he was also broken from it all. She could have sworn she felt Anakin after giving birth, but perhaps it was only another mystery of the Force. Bail, Padme, and Obi-Wan discussed their next move, how they would build a small resistance, and Padme said they should start near a planet with all the resources they would need, somewhere she has influence. The second moon orbiting Naboo, Rory. A largely overgrown, swampy world, but one with civilization, and one where she had influence as the former queen and senator of Naboo. They all knew Padme could no longer be seen by the public. Her survival had to be kept hidden, outside of their small resistance, or else the Emperor would come looking for the children. They traveled to the Naboo Moon Rory, and Padme spoke to the Queen Kalantha. It was a risky move, but it ultimately worked as the Queen was afraid of what the Empire would do to Naboo and the surrounding moons, with it being Palpatine's home planet. Occupation here would be swift, and peace would be disrupted. So the Queen gave Padme and her children access to a living space on the outskirts of the city, where Obi-Wan would also reside nearby, and help with whatever he could. Yoda went to Dagobah, but could be much more connected with the children and the upcoming fight if need be. Around a month went by of the Empire establishing itself, and Padme laying low with Obi-Wan and the children on Rory. They had to wait to act, but the day finally came for Padme to emerge for a bit. The time had come for a staged funeral for her on Naboo with a closed casket. She was going to wear a mask over her mouth and nose with a hood on. This was her best and first chance to look for allies to her cause. And Padme went to Naboo and was surprised to see how strong the Imperial presence already was but she blended in rather easily with the crowd. No one was looking for the person whose casket was being slowly moved through the area to where her grave would be. And in the funeral, a few people stood out, but there was one Padme was certain would join her cause. The funeral ended, and Ahsoka Tano walked through the halls, her hood still up, as Bail Organa emerged, guiding her to a more hidden balcony overlooking the river. Bail asked what Ahsoka would do from here, and she said that she did not know. Everyone she loved was gone, and from behind another wall, Padme emerged to say, not everyone, with a smile. Ahsoka couldn't stop herself from running and hugging Padme. How was this possible? She just went to her funeral, but it didn't matter. Padme was alive, 
and soon enough Ahsoka agreed to join them on the moon Rory. Another month would go by, and Padme's secret influence to those she could trust was beginning to grow on Naboo. Jar Jar Binks joined the rebellion with the Gungan army now at their disposal, and many members of the Naboo security were ready to fight the Empire, whose presence on Naboo was growing steadily. And at this time, Bail Organa, Mon Mothma, and other senators had a meeting with Emperor Palpatine, the first face-to-face -face meeting with the Emperor. And Padme was on Coruscant, protected by Captain Rex wearing stolen clone trooper armor to blend in. The two of them were hiding, waiting for the senators. Bail, Mon, and a few others talked with the Emperor, and he vowed not to disband the Senate. It would not happen, he said. The main difference, Palpatine said, is that after getting input and hearing what the Senate had to say, his decision on things will be final. No debates, no deliberation, he will make final decisions. The Senators could not argue, and soon the meeting came to an end. The Senators met with Padme on the streets of Coruscant, and they walked secretly together, discussing what Palpatine said, discussing the new Empire. Mon had joined their cause, and she was saying now was the time to act. Padme and Bail were arguing that it was too soon, and they discussed their next moves as they realized they were near a landing platform. Security clones began to run past them as the senators realized an Imperial shuttle was beginning to land. For reasons they didn't fully know, Bail and Padme's attention was drawn to the shuttle as the ramp descended. Clones were standing and waiting as a tall, dark, masked, menacing figure descended down the ramp. Padme had an eerie feeling about this man, and she heard something that destroyed her entire world all over again. The clone captain turned to the dark machine and said, The Emperor is waiting for you, Lord Vader. Vader. The name Anakin was given, which Padme and Bail knew. Without waiting another moment, Bail acted, grabbing Padme and Mon by the arm and running. After a few steps, Padme fell to her knees, fainting from this revelation. Bail picked her up, and they continued to run to his ship. Darth Vader put his hand up to the clone to silence him, and felt into the Force. Fear surrounded this area. Fear that he recognized. It couldn't be. Vader looked around quickly, going from a slow walk to a hurried pace, looking around the area, and then Vader looked around to the landing platform in the distance, seeing the Tantive Four, ship of Bail Organa, take off in the distance. Then Vader looked to the ground and saw something that shattered his world as well. One small, tiny thing that meant everything to him. A necklace. The same necklace that a small boy once gave to the woman he would go on to marry. The necklace that Anakin Skywalker gave to Padme Amidala. Vader picked it up and the remnants inside of him of Anakin emerged. Vader spent every moment since Mustafar trying to kill Anakin but now he rose to the surface inside of Vader. Vader tried to push him away and closed his fist on the necklace to crush it, but he couldn't do it. Padme was alive, which meant Anakin was still alive. His master lied to him. Vader knew she was alive. She was alive, he felt it the whole time. The battle inside himself was more even than ever before, but Anakin was taking over. Padme was alive. His master turned him into this machine this monster, and his anger rose up in him, his fury, his hatred, the dark side. Vader embraced it, hiding Anakin back inside of him. Padme was a traitor to his empire. His master needed him. On Rory, Obi-Wan sensed something was wrong as the Tantive Four descended. He looked to Ahsoka, who was watching the children, and slowly he approached the ramp as it opened and Padme stumbled down, running right at Obi-Wan and screaming at him saying that he lied, Anakin is alive. Alive, but a twisted, evil machine. Padme fell to her knees, saying the Jedi did this, the Republic, the Clone Wars, and even blamed herself. Before long, she was on the ground in tears. Her husband was alive, and she knew the truth. It was his own fault, along with the Emperor. Obi-Wan put a hand on her shoulder. He too was shocked to learn that Anakin was alive, but slowly he came to realize one thing. If Padme knew that Anakin was alive, then he would almost certainly have realized that Padme was alive. The fight would be coming back to them sooner than he'd expected. On Coruscant, Vader knelt in front of his master. Darth Sidious said that he could sense the conflict in Vader. 
and Vader admitted that it was remnants of Anakin, but nothing more. The further he goes into the dark side, the less of Anakin that remains in him. Sidious said this was good, and that he had a mission for Vader. During his meeting with Bale, he had a tracker placed on his ship. Sidious didn't want any sort of dissension for his rule, so he ordered Vader to track the ship, kill Bail Organa and Mon Mothma, along with any other allies they may be working with. Vader realized what this meant, and he wondered if Sidious knew what this meant. Did his master know Padme was alive? Vader stood up and realized if he killed Padme, Anakin would die as well. He turned to leave, darkness flowing through him, relishing this opportunity. After Obi-Wan, Ahsoka, and Padme recovered the news about Anakin, they got back into business mode. It was very possible the Empire would be looking for her, and they wanted to warn the Naboo, so they took off with Bail in the Tantive Four, heading for the Naboo Palace. They entered together, Bail leading with Ahsoka, Padme, and Obi-Wan wearing hoods to blend in simply looking as aides to Senator Bail Organa. Bail met with the Queen Apollena of Naboo to discuss the Imperial presence on the planet, and how the Naboo plans to deal with it, if at all. The Queen was already starting to lose hope at ever combating the Empire. Their forces were strong, and she was beginning to think that keeping her people safe, under the rule of the Empire, could be the best move for them all. As Obi-Wan, Padme, and Ahsoka waited, Obi-Wan began to notice something suspicious. Slowly, the clone troopers inside of the palace began to leave in single file. One by one, they all left, and soon enough, the palace was vacated of any Imperial presence. This was not good. Obi-Wan ordered Ahsoka to get Padme back to their ship. Something was wrong. And so Ahsoka and Padme took a secret back exit out of the palace. They would use the aid of the Gungans to go around through the water to their landing platform, and they took off as Obi-Wan ran after Bail. Bail was walking with the Queen, as he too realized the Imperial presence had vacated. It was just the two of them, and the Queen apologized now, saying she has found a way to earn her peace within the Empire. She said the Emperor forced her hand, and Bail watched in horror as she pulled a blaster from her robe and shot it right at him. But the blaster bolt whizzed to the side as Obi-Wan used the force to redirect it, igniting his lightsaber and cutting down the blaster. The Queen fell backwards as Obi-Wan held his lightsaber to her face. It was a close call. But Obi-Wan then heard the door behind him slide open, followed by mechanical breathing and the sound of a snap hiss as a lightsaber was ignited. Bail was lifted up by his throat and he began to choke. Obi-Wan turned quickly and used a strong force push to throw the man he knew immediately to be Vader against the wall. Obi-Wan ordered Bail to run, and he did, with the Queen going in the other direction, as Obi-Wan watched Vader get back to his feet. Obi-Wan held his lightsaber up in the stance of his former master, Qui-Gon Jinn, and told the Dark Lord that he will do what he must to finish the job. Vader stood on the opposite side and slowly approached, telling Obi-Wan that he should have killed him when he had the chance. Part of Obi-Wan wanted to find Anakin inside of Vader to bring him back, but he knew only Padme had even a sliver of a chance to do so. In the heart of the Naboo Palace now, lightsabers suddenly clashed with a fierce intensity, casting their shadows against the walls. Obi-Wan Kenobi, calm, precise, and calculated, locked sabers with Vader, his former apprentice consumed by the dark side, and now consumed by this suit. Their sparks were flying across the room, illuminating the palace with fleeting bursts of light. Obi-Wan's blue blade clashed against Vader's red one, the air crackling with the energy of their conflict. Each movement from Obi-Wan was fluid, but Vader was clearly still learning how to fight inside of this suit. All of his limbs were mechanical, and he was heavily restricted. But his sheer physical strength kept Obi-Wan at bay for now. The room echoed with the hum of lightsabers and the occasional crash of furniture, as the two combatants pushed against each other. The battle moved through the palace chambers, Obi-Wan leaping and somersaulting through the air, trying to beat Vader with agility because of how restricted his movements were. Pillars of marble shattered under the impact of their blows, and ancient artifacts lay scattered. With a whirling motion now, Obi-Wan got far enough inside of Vader's long reach to inflict a forearm wound. Instead of flesh and blood, sparks flew off of the robotic glove, and it did little to slow Vader down. Obi-Wan was now extremely determined to end this, seeing Vader's weakness, how he was not ready to fight in this suit, 
and knew he could win with Vader stuck like this. He fought not just to protect himself, but for the twin children, for Padme, Ahsoka, everyone now under the rule of the Empire. Vader, with his breathing heavy and labored, fought with a desperation as he felt himself begin to lose. And as Obi-Wan knocked Vader's lightsaber across the room, he realized the building was beginning to crumble from their fight. Obi-Wan reached out to Vader now, trying in a moment of desperation to bring Anakin back. But one of the pillars fell directly between them, and separated Obi-Wan from Vader. And Obi-Wan wanted to pursue, but his comlink beeped. Imperial reinforcements were arriving, he was informed. They had to go. Now. Obi-Wan couldn't see Vader. He was buried, perhaps gone for good this time. And Obi-Wan took off running to the landing platform. He jumped from the balcony, floating down to the platform, and boarding the Tantive Four. Once he was on board, Bale took off. Obi-Wan looked around and was struck by horror. He looked to Ahsoka, who was the co-pilot here, and asked where Padme was. Ahsoka said that she was just here, and Obi-Wan looked to the palace, realizing where Padme has gone. Darth Vader used the Force to remove the rubble from around him. His arm was damaged, and his mask was broken, revealing his eyes. He slowly walked out to the balcony, and watched the Tantive Four fly away, wondering if Padme was with them. Then, a voice. The only voice Anakin ever wanted to hear. Padme standing behind him, and she said, Annie? She climbed through the palace and through the destruction, and she was here now. Anakin could barely bring himself to turn around, but he felt a hand on his shoulder, and now he turned, slowly, to see his wife. She gave a gentle smile of disbelief, happiness, and despair, all mixed together, and they stared at each other like they were the only two people in the galaxy. Eventually, Padme said, I missed you, Annie, and Anakin didn't know how to respond. He tried to fight it, saying, Anakin's gone, dead, and Padme approached him again, saying, No, Darth Vader is dead. My love is alive. Anakin, come home with us. Anakin's eyes were a soft blue as he said, It's too late. Everything we fought for is gone. I destroyed it. And Padme took a deep breath, touching Anakin's face beneath the mask and saying, No, Anakin, what we stood for, what we fight for is not gone. The galaxy needs Anakin. I need Anakin. Our children need Anakin Skywalker. Anakin looked down to his red lightsaber, turned, realizing what he could do for his children, for his wife, for the galaxy. He could still save himself. He could make the galaxy safe for his children. And he threw his red lightsaber far down into the Naboo River. And he looked down to see the Naboo Imperial reinforcements. The Emperor himself descended from a shuttle with his royal guards. He'd predicted this fall for Vader, and he was here to destroy Vader once and for all. Anakin closed his eyes, calling on the light side of the Force now, reaching out to Obi-Wan. Inside the Tantive Four, Obi-Wan looked out the window, and suddenly his entire world went quiet. He was surrounded by only the Force, and the voice of Anakin called to him, asking for help. Obi-Wan smiled, telling Ahsoka that Padme got to Anakin, and he needs their help now. Bale opened the ramp and flew over the palace. Obi-Wan reached into a nearby box and pulled out the blue lightsaber of Anakin Skywalker. Anakin looked on as Darth Sidious entered the room. Padme was behind him as Sidious approached, telling Anakin that he was a failure, a disgrace to the Sith, and would be dealt with accordingly. But then the Tantive Four flew to the balcony, and Obi-Wan and Ahsoka got on both of Anakin's sides. Obi-Wan said, Oh, I don't think so, and handed Anakin his blue lightsaber. Padme boarded the Tantive Four as Sidious scowled, igniting his own red lightsaber. The grand walls crumbling around them, debris scattered across the marble floor, with Anakin standing with his new blue lightsaber ablaze, moving with Obi-Wan and Ahsoka towards the Sith. Sidious, draped in dark robes, moved with grace himself, his red lightsaber now cutting into the air. His evil laughter echoed through the ruins as he faced the trio of Jedi, yellow eyes filled with malice. The battle was a display of blinding lights and clashes. Anakin, despite his flawed suit, attacked with a renewed sense of purpose. Sidious parried their attacks, his anger fueling his strength. Lightning crackled from his fingertips, forcing the Jedi to defend against both his lightsaber strikes and the power of the dark side of the Force. 
the battle moved from the crumbling halls to the palace gardens. Amidst the ancient statues and overgrown plants, the Jedi fought valiantly against the Sith Lord, the clash of their blades resonating against Naboo's fading sunlight. And with each strike, the Jedi pushed back against the Sith, refusing to yield to the dark side. And in a final, coordinated assault, Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Ahsoka combined their strength, catching Sidious off guard. With a swift strike, they disarmed him, sending his red lightsaber flying away. And with a burst of blinding light, Sidious was blasting more lightning at them now. It sent Ahsoka and Obi-Wan sliding across the room, but Anakin stood tall, his suit giving him the added physical strength needed to push through the lightning, deflecting it at the ground. Then, Anakin spun, avoiding the lightning, and stabbed Sidious through the chest. His life faded away as he looked at his greatest failure, Anakin Skywalker. Now Anakin fell to his knees with the Sith dead. The lightning did greatly damage his suit, and he felt everything go completely dark. Days later, Padme stood with Ahsoka, Obi-Wan, and Mon Mothma inside the Senate building on Coruscant. Bail Organa was giving a speech, providing the Empire, now turning into a new Republic, with proof that Palpatine was a Sith Lord, working with the Separatists to achieve ultimate control. Bail nominated Mon Mothma to be the new Chancellor and lead them into a new era of peace. It would take time to rid the galaxy of the tyranny, but Bail and Mon vowed to make it happen. When it ended, they all flew back to Naboo, where Padme had a royal suite gifted to her for helping bring the Empire to an end and bringing peace to Naboo. And as they went inside of the medical room, Anakin Skywalker woke up from the fight for the first time. Wounds healing, and inside of a new suit, blue and white, and much better suited for him to live peacefully. Anakin would reside with Padme on Naboo, raising their children, and eventually helping train with Obi-Wan, Ahsoka, and Yoda. Anakin was grateful that Padme had survived that horrific day on Mustafar. That was not him. He was manipulated by the Sith, and only she could have brought him back so soon. And folks, that's our story for today. One of the longer ones in a while, so I hope you enjoyed. This, honestly, one of my favorite ones to write. I really, really enjoyed it. A uh, parallel between uh, Ben Solo and Han Solo in Episode 9, and then Padme and Vader slash Anakin here in this one, with them turning Ben and Anakin back to the light. Wanted to try that. I think it worked well. Let me know what you thought. Leave a like. Thanks for watching. Comment your thoughts, and I'll see you in the next video.